What's up guys, Chaz with Side Hustle Network bringing you another video. In today's video, I'm going to dive in and show you guys how we were able to make almost $3,500 in revenue in just three days. Now, before you start thinking, oh, Chaz is throwing out the clickbait titles, we can all agree on one thing. Sales, numbers, and revenue means nothing. It's a bunch of BS numbers people love to throw around on YouTube, Instagram, just to make themselves look good. I'm gonna break down not only what we did in revenue, we had a great weekend, but more importantly, I'm gonna break down at the end of this video exactly what we made net profit, which is what matters. Revenue doesn't pay your bills. Revenue doesn't build your time freedom. Revenue doesn't support your family. Profit is what sustains a business and profit is what supports your family. So that's what we're gonna talk about at the end of the video. But let's bring you through the story of how we were able to make this happen. This is gonna be kind of a mesh of what sold on eBay, what sold on Amazon, and also a third part that we have recently added in that helped boost these sales and profit tremendously. So first, let's start with the overview. What makes up the $3,500? And for those of you that are going to try to do the, Chaz, you didn't do exactly 35, let me just break it down exactly what it was. $3,481. Can we all agree that I am okay and give her permission just to round up to 35? Because let's just be honest, it sounds better. But let me break this down, dive in a little bit and show you guys where this money came from. So within our business, Side Hustle Network, we are big fans of multiple streams of income, not putting all of your eggs in one basket, and that's exactly what we did here. The three platforms that we sold product through to make this revenue and profit happen were Amazon, FBA, eBay, and the third one recently we added in, which I mentioned, is going to be local sales specifically in the form of a warehouse sale. I'll dive into that in just a minute. But to start, I wanna lay out exactly what the numbers were from each platform. On Amazon FBA in those three days, and this was July 4th weekend, this was July 5th, 6th, and 7th, we did $591 through Amazon FBA. And again, this is going to be sales first. I'll talk about the actual profit in a minute. Platform number two was eBay. We technically have two eBay accounts we were selling both products on. We're now transitioning into one account different story, but combination of eBay as a total with both accounts, we did $810 in revenue. And then last but certainly not least, the home run for us was this weekend, we did our warehouse sale. This warehouse sale brought in $2,080 in revenue. So let me tell you real quick what we've been doing with this warehouse sale. This was our third time doing this. We run it one time per month for one weekend. This started as we hosted a garage sale just here out of our warehouse warehouse space as a way to get rid of customer returns, slow moving inventory, low ticket items. And we did fantastic. I threw up a Facebook marketplace ad, Craigslist, we put up signs around town, opened up the door to the warehouse and all of a sudden people showed up and they gave us money for the stuff that we would consider junk. We brought in over a thousand dollars in cash that weekend and that sparked something. What if I can find product that's for under $2 to sell locally here at this sale, and I have a price point of about $5. Can I make that work? Not only were we able to make it work, but we also partnered up and brought in some of our great friends here in the local Northwest area. Some of you guys may know them, Portland Pickers. We said, hey, we've got the space. You guys have a bunch of estate sale antique collector stuff. We'll just set up like a little mini booth and treat this like our own indoor flea market. So they've been bringing stuff down all three sales. They've been helping us out tremendously with actually running the sale, taking transactions, etc. And we've built amazing friendships um, out of it, which is hands down the most important part. But back to the numbers for those of you that are here for the numbers. I have been buying liquidation pallets from various suppliers and sources. I try to keep my buy cost underneath about $2, sometimes $3 on the good stuff. And my average sell price has been about $5 dollars for this sale. Shockingly, I am learning what types of products are moving best locally for us. I thought toys would be the home run and it's actually kitchen, it's home, it's sporting good stuff. So each time we've run this indoor garage sale for ourselves, we're getting smarter and we're building an email list based on what our local customers are looking for. 
It's just been a really cool third reselling avenue to add into our belt. So that brings us to the grand total of $3,481 for sales for those three days. Now let's dive in on the other half and show you guys what we actually sold on Amazon and eBay. Now I'm not gonna dive in and show you every single little sale that happened because some of that is wholesale product that I cannot show here on YouTube. Some of it is going to be nine, 10, $12 items. But I did pick out a handful, about 17 items. I'm gonna flash right here on the screen for you, take it behind my computer and dive in and show you guys what we actually sold sold on those platforms. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you guys kind of what we were talking about with the warehouse sale. So we literally just open up our warehouse door, set up tables and all that fun stuff around here, load them up with product. You guys can see I'm still getting cleaned up. This is some of the leftovers that we have uh, from the Portland Pickers, more antique stuff. Usually this is the home base for all the hard goods stuff, but since we have this side of our shop, which is usually all the clothing stuff you guys have seen in our vlogs before, what I then did was decide to throw up shelves inside of here and just start seeing if hard goods stuff will move. Now we do open up our little shop here on the weekends for the clothing aspect. I'm curious to see how the hard goods stuff is going to do now. Now the warehouse sale, it's a big sale. We do huge markdowns. All the clothing in the shop is five bucks. You guys can see we just put up bright, obnoxious neon signs that work tremendously. Um, shoes are between eight and 10 bucks, so we do really cheap pricing, but again, our buy cost is under two bucks for most of this stuff. Hard good stuff, some of it's gonna be a little bit more spendy. You guys can see we have these like Star Wars TIE Fighters, so I did sell um, about three or four of those at 20 bucks each. Some of the other stuff, just, you know, lower end, kind of little toy shenanigans, um, some more Star Wars stuff, some Legos. The Legos usually go pretty quick. I don't know how I ended up with that one. I had eight bucks on it, probably could have moved it at five, so I'm learning as I go. But for those of you curious about the warehouse sale and how we've been making that a third stream of income for us, um, that's it. That's basically how we're doing it and it's been working out great. But the cool aspect about doing this local sale is I'm learning that I love people. And that's weird because usually as resellers, we deal with online transactions. We don't see, we don't hear from our customers ever. So the coolest part about doing this local warehouse sale is yes, we're making some profit. And the cool part about the profit aspect is the profit from that now pays for our entire warehouse rent. But the flip side, the cool part I was not expecting is I am thoroughly enjoying seeing my repeat customers come in. We're starting to build a rep with each other. Some customers are bringing their inventory to me. I had a guy that does transform he brought in this load of about 15 vintage transformers um, new in the package and I was able to make a purchase off of him and I'm going to be able to resell them for a profit. So just building that local base of customers that are going to be repeat buyers. Some people are bringing their stuff to me. We're able to transact with each other. Uh, it's just been really cool to get connected with my own local community because we can all agree the reselling game can be a little lonely and that's why we're all embedded in Instagram and Facebook groups because we need reselling friends. Anyways, it's been cool to get plugged into my local community, make some money at the same time, get a BS around with some good friends. It's been a great time. But back to Amazon eBay talk, let's dive into the computer, show you guys what we did. All right, starting with eBay, I'm just gonna hammer through some of this stuff, show you a few items that did sell, what we paid for them, etc. First one up is this vintage Sanyo M9935K. I was a little sad when I saw this sell because it sold, and I kid you not, the night that it sold, Tristan and I started watching season three of Stranger Things. Not this exact model, but pretty darn close. It was featured in that series, and if you guys pay attention to my background here, I love Stranger Things. So I've got some of the memorabilia stuff up there. So I would have totally kept this because it resembled that stereo that's in there. But it did sell for 60 bucks. It sold four parts as is. A lot of people pass on this kind of stuff, guys. If you have electronics that you either cannot test, you don't have the equipment to test it, you don't know if it works, you don't wanna go through the hassle of it. As long as you are clearly stating in your description that you are selling this as is four parts, you can oftentimes make a profit because somebody is gonna buy these items, restore them, and then resell them themselves, it's a win-win. I found this for $3 at a garage sale. One of the speakers wasn't working. I clearly stated all of this in the listing. It took about two months to sell and it sold for 60 bucks. This lot of four Motorola MC9090 handheld barcode scanners were part of an electronics wholesale lot that we purchased. We sold these for $190. We actually have several sets or lots of these. This was just one. Buy cost was about $80 on this, so we definitely made profit. 
These Whistle GPS pet tracker units, you'll actually see in an upcoming video that I've already pre-recorded and it's getting dropped soon. I actually scored six of these in a Goodwill for $30 each. Now at a $52 sell price, we only made $10, which is still 30% ROI, which I'm good with. Again, we scored six of these, they were $30 each. We have now sold through, you guys can see right here on the screenshot, still one left. So at $10 profit each, I'm good with that. This Zag hinged Bluetooth keyboard folio I was honestly going to donate to Goodwill. We had a bunch of stuff left over after our warehouse sale that we just did. This was in a liquidation palette. I paid $2 for the item. And something said, you know what? Just start looking stuff up on eBay that you're left with. I should have done this first, but I looked up a bunch of stuff after we were done with the sale. Some of it was worth money on eBay. So I sold this for 20 bucks. Shockingly, it sold in about a week. Women's Nike Metcon 3s, 52 bucks. These were actually on consignment. So we got these technically free. So all we had to do was just take a minute to do some photos, create the listing, ship them out, maybe five minutes total into this product. And we have a split going with somebody on that. Trista does a lot of the clothing items. So I'm gonna pick out some of the ones that she sold. These are more bread and butter items. They're not crazy high dollar amounts, but there's things that sell every single day for us. Rampage Vintage 90s Women's Short Floral Dress sold for $23. That cost about a dollar for her to buy that. Same thing with this Anthropology Trumpet Skirt Size 8 Orange Print sold for $19. There was about a $1 buy cost involved with that one too. Next up, some of my fun flips. I have been getting heavy into the collector's items, specifically the vintage or um, early 90s, even into the mid to late 90s toys. I'm loving this category. So I scored roughly about 120 various Ninja Turtle items between vintage vehicles, the, the old school turtle tanks, all the way down to the factory sealed 1988. They're sitting back here somewhere. These have just been really fun items for me to flip to and we're making a couple bucks with them, which is nice. So this first one was a 1998 set of four of all the Ninja Turtles. Um, these were new in the box, almost pristine condition boxes. Paid about $35 between all four. Sold for $115, so I was absolutely happy with that. A second set of Ninja Turtles in that same lot that I had bought out was these comic editions, and I love the style of these ones. These were a 2014, so they're definitely not vintage, but they're newer. Just the comic series that these were, were a little bit higher ticket than some of the newer stuff. So sold all four of these. Again, I paid about 35 bucks for each lot that I did. So $35 cost into this one sold for 65. Not a massive profit like the other one, but still a really fun flip and made some cash doing it. Rescue Heroes, Jake Justice by Fisher Price 2004. This thing was pristine condition. I found this in Goodwill. If you guys follow our Instagram, you would have seen a lot of this stuff in our stories mode. I document on a daily basis on our Instagram account showing where I'm picking this stuff up at. So if you're not following that, be sure to follow the Side Hustle Network. Mr. Jake Justice, I picked up for $2.99 at Goodwill, pristine condition. I cleaned up the packaging, it was really dusty. Made it look nice. This photo, because of that yellow on the white background, just popped so well. Sold for $19.95, which was a higher price than what some of the other listings were for. Game of Thrones, Mother of Dragons, white tank top, very basic item. We had a $2 cost into this one, it sold for 19. We had a pair of these Chubby's shorts, which by the way, huge bolo, Chubby's brand stuff sells for a high dollar amount. We had a $10 buy cost into these. We sold for $29 plus $6 shipping. And you guys can see right there, we usually do free shipping. Now we are testing out paid shipping and right here proved it worked for us. Now let's move on to the Amazon side. Now the Amazon side is a little bit more tricky because we do more wholesale specific items on there. I still do retail and online arbitrage. So I'm gonna share some of those finds on here for you. But the wholesale stuff, I want to, I wanna share it so bad, but I can't. As much as I love y'all, some of you guys are gonna start saturating the prices if I give out some of the good stuff. But here are some legit items that sold um, that were sourced via retail and online arbitrage. Fisker's brand sprinkler head. 1959, paid about a dollar for that one. Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition. These were $7 and some change at Walmart being clearanced out a while back. So I bought out about seven or eight of these things. They've all sold now. This is the one wholesale item I wanted to put on here because it's been a very consistent mover for us. We went fairly heavy and deep into these ones. So we still have plenty of stock left because of we have stock. 
I'm not sharing what the item is, but I'll give you a sneak peek. It is a Centrum item. We are selling these in a three pack for $37.61 and our repricer is in there kind of doing its work. So the pricing changes by a couple dollars, but we have about a $20 buy cost into these ones. So that's not a huge profit, but it's a quick mover and we're selling many of them and we it's wholesale. So we can just keep repeating those orders. This was another Walmart clearance item I had bought several of. I believe this was the last one sold for us. $59.99, I bought these for $30. Kohler Master Shower 22 and three quarters inch shower slide bar. Buy cost for this one, $5 turned into $59. That made me happy. So now that you guys have seen some of the items that we sold, you guys saw our warehouse sale items. You guys can see it's just kind of a mix load. The, the clothing, we get shoes, we get hard goods stuff, the kitchen, the toys, just a massive load. That's usually coming from liquidation companies. That takes a little bit of legwork though. So keep in mind, if you wanna start doing garage sales, warehouse sales, whatever your method is for local selling, just keep in mind, so it's pretty labor intensive because we have to spend time setting up all the tables. Um, we're now to the point where I can hire the employees to do that part. So I'm freeing up my time away from that. You just gotta figure out what works best for you, but understand if you're gonna sell locally, whether it's meeting up with people on Facebook Marketplace or you're hosting your own garage sale or warehouse sale like what we do, a little bit more legwork involved, but the profit made up for it. Speaking of profit, let's dive in, get past the sales numbers and show you guys what we actually made in our pocket after the three days. So quick breakdown, Amazon was $591 in sales, but the net profit, and when I say net profit, guys, I'm talking after my fees, after my shipping costs, and after my cost is deducted. We made $273 from that $591 in sales. On eBay, we did $810, Pure profit was $428. Again, after all my costs, my fees, my shipping, all that good stuff, 428 bucks is what we put in our pocket after the weekend. Last but definitely not least, uh, the home run for us was this sale. And let me just, before I say the numbers, let me just state this, like this is not what we do every weekend. This was just paired up with the weekend that we did our sale. Some weekends are a lot more, some weekends are a lot less. Don't be one of the people that watches this video thinking this is just how we operate every day. Again, if you guys are on our Instagram, I document every single day over there. That's where I share a lot of the daily stuff. So the warehouse sale, we did $2,080 in sales after I took out all of my costs. Now the cool part with this, no fees, no shipping. That's how I'm able to get away with that business model because I'm buying stuff for two, sometimes $3. I'm selling a lot of the stuff. I start high on day one and by day three, I drop the price down to about four or five bucks and we're just focusing on moving volume. We wanna get as many people to buy as much stuff as we can. So we provide bags, we provide boxes, we provide square for taking cards, all the methods you can use to get customers to buy more. That's the business model we're doing with that. But after all of our costs involved, we ended up pocketing $1,242. So grand totals. $3,481 was our total sales for that weekend. Again, this is July 5th through July 7th, leaving a total net profit of $1,943. So the takeaway from this video is not like, oh, congrats, you guys made some money. I don't care about that. It's the message I wanna to portray to you guys and kind of our methodology to how we treat reselling. We are not comfortable risking everything on one platform. We've all seen how quickly Amazon can suspend you. We've all seen the different things that happen with eBay. The online selling platforms are amazing in their own ways and they are to be utilized to their fullest. But if you're putting all of your eggs in one basket, you are risking it all. As much as it would suck if Amazon or eBay or God forbid both decided, you know what? You can no longer sell on our platforms. It would tremendously suck but I have now included a third way of reselling product that I can create a business model out of that. I'm not telling you how to run your business, I'm just giving you some insight onto our thought process and how we work things. Side Hustle Network, that's why we have that brand because we are big fans of having these multiple side hustles. It spreads the risk out a little bit and you're able to have money coming in from different sources. Some are going to be more labor intensive, some methods are going to be more time consuming, some methods are gonna take a lot more capital. At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what type of reselling business you want to create and it's up to you to go through the trials and errors and figure it out for yourself. 
You can watch these videos, you can watch other people's videos, you can follow Instagram accounts, but none of that is going to teach you what firsthand experience will. So whether you wanna get into Amazon with retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesale, private label, you wanna get into eBay and Poshmark with thrifting, with going to garage sales, whether you wanna host your own local garage sale, warehouse sale, whatever the case may be, watch the videos, consume the content, get inspired, take down some ideas on a notepad, but most importantly, implement those ideas. Those of us who are crushing it in this game are crushing it for a reason. We put ourselves out there, we do the work. So if you watch these videos because you saw flashy numbers on that title and that thumbnail, don't let it detour you away from the work that went into producing those numbers. But at the end of the day, it's your business. Run it however you want. We're gonna continue running the business the way that fits our lifestyle and what we are building for our own time freedom. I suggest that you do the same. This has been Chaz with Side Hustle Network. Peace out, we'll see you next time.